Конденсаторы наряду с резисторами являются одними из важнейших пассивных компонентов. Они разделяются по классам. Это постоянные конденсаторы, переменные конденсаторы и подстроечные конденсаторы. Among the passive components, capacitors like resistors are very important. There are various classes of capacitors, fixed capacitors, variable capacitors and aligning capacitors. When it comes to the type of dielectric, capacitors can have ceramic dielectrics, film dielectrics, electrolytic dielectrics and ionistas that form a separate group. First, I would like to speak about electrolytic capacitors. One of their peculiarities is their capacity, which changes with the operating time. There are several models of electrolytic capacitors. The most popular type of capacitors are radial capacitors that are labeled K5035 in Russian terminology. Small K5035 are referred to as mini. Capacitors K56 are non-polar. K5029 are exolyte capacitors. There is also a special subgroup of non-polar capacitors that can be used in parts of alternating or pulsating current. It can also be utilized in standard paths with no polarity choice. Let's not talk about film capacitors. We offer film capacitors with a variety of dielectrics. Capacitors K7370 with Lepsin dielectric are the most widespread. Capacitors K7082 with polypropylene dielectric are capable of higher voltage with minimum loss. Now we'll look at ceramic capacitors. Ceramic capacitors are used in both low voltage and high voltage circuits. In low voltage circuits, capacitors K107 or their important replacements are usually used. They work with dozens of picofarads as well as with just a few microfarads. Capacitors K1070A covered in epoxy resin are also produced. They are designed in plastic cases to use in harsh weather conditions. For high voltages, there are special ceramic capacitors. They work with dozens to thousands of picofarads. Ionistars is another special type of capacitors that has appeared recently. They are somewhat similar to electrolytic capacitors, but they have enormous capacity in farads and very low voltage of 2.5 to 5 volts. Apart from traditional lead-out capacitors, there are SMD capacitors for surface mounting. For instance, ceramic CMD capacitors are produced in a variety of cases, from the smallest O402 to the largest. 20 to 20. Accordingly, the voltage will range from dozens to hundreds of volts. Electrolytic capacitors can go in cases for surface mounting as well, like this one looking really similar to K5035 or tantalum capacitors. These SMD capacitors look very much like ceramic capacitors, but they have a much larger capacity and lower loss levels. They are produced in lead-out and lead-less cases. The peculiar feature of these capacitors is their slightly limited capacity, long life term and minimum loss. However, it should be said that the difference in price is fairly big. Now that we have absorbed fixed capacitors, let's proceed on to variable capacitors. Almost all of them are aligning capacitors, meaning that they are usually used for one-time adjustment of a device. They are subdivided into several groups. At our disposal we have capacitors TZ03, TZB and TZC. Their capacity ranges from a few picofarads to several hundred picofarads with a voltage of 60 volt maximum. Now let's briefly outline the use of capacitors. Small ceramic capacitors are used in electronics in highly frequency parts. High voltage ceramic capacitors are used in pulsating paths and voltage converters. Electrolytic capacitors are used in computed electronics. Small electrolytic capacitors serve in portable devices and pocket gadgets. Ionistors are used to memorize information when a pocket computer or a mobile phone battery has gone dead. Film capacitors are used for sound reinforcement and center frequency paths. Besides small film capacitors, there are starting film capacitors used to start an engine. They operate with sufficiently higher voltage and wordless power. Finally, centellum capacitors are used in those critical paths where extensive capacity is required. Here I would like to end this review of capacitors. For further information, please refer to our website for engineering documentation. Телефоне или в миниатюрном компьютере. А пленочные конденсаторы используются в цепях усиления звука и в цепях средних частот. Кроме малогабаритных пленочных конденсаторов, существуют еще и пленочные пусковые конденсаторы, которые используются для пуска двигателей. Они отличаются значительно большим напряжением и электрической реактивной мощностью. 
И, наконец, танталовые конденсаторы используются в цепях высокой ответственности, там, где требуется большая емкость. На этом я хотел бы закончить наш обзор конденсаторов. Все подробности вы сможете узнать на нашем сайте или в технической документации.